Skyrim modding has came a long way in the past 12 years, and coming into 2024, you can easily get confused on what exactly you need to know. There is an abundance of really useful and well-produced guides on YouTube for every small detail and tool, but today, I wanted to provide you with an all-in-one, no-nonsense guide for new players who always wanted to get into Skyrim modding but felt too intimidated. As a brief synopsis of this video, here are the areas we're going to cover. Setup, installing mods, tools, and load order. And there is also a far more in-detailed written guide available over on Patreon if you'd like a more thorough step-by-step -step walkthrough, but don't worry, this video will cover everything you need to know about modding Skyrim. Oh, and as a prerequisite for this video, I'm not going to be making you downgrade your game or anything like that, so just make sure you have a fully updated Steam install of Skyrim. This is the most common version of the game new users will be playing, so the video is designed around that fact. Setup. First, we're going to need a program to manage our mods. I recommend Mod Organizer 2. Click the link in the description, go to Files, Download, and run the installer. Once installed, launch the program if it hasn't already done so on its own, and you'll be asked to create a new instance. Click Global Instance and select your Skyrim Special Edition game to manage. If it doesn't show up, select Browse and locate the game executable in your Skyrim folder, usually in Steam Apps Common Skyrim Special Edition, assuming you installed the game through Steam, which is the most common version. Once this is selected, press Next and Finish. Then when prompted with a tutorial, press No. Unless you want to go through the tutorial of course, but you shouldn't need to if you're following this video. Then when asked to associate NXM links, press Yes. Now select the Settings button on the top right, navigate to Nexus tab, and connect your Nexus account. If you don't have one, make one, then connect it. Now you have linked Mod Organizer to your Skyrim game and can begin downloading mods if you so choose. But let me explain a little about what you're looking at in this program before we continue. On the left side we have our mod list. This is where your mods will appear when you download them from Nexus. Each mod has the ability to be ticked on or off and can be dragged up or down in your list depending on which mod you want to take priority but we will go more in depth on load order at the end of the video. On the right side we have our plugin list. In simple terms, Skyrim is built using plugins. The base game is called Skyrim.esm for example, and the DLC each comes with their own plugins. Most mods you'll come across are made in the creation kit, and will contain their own plugins, which will appear in this list when activated. If a mod doesn't contain a plugin, don't worry, it might not need one. Most commonly when a mod changes a texture or a mesh for example, it is just replacing an existing Skyrim file with a new one, so it doesn't actually change anything within any plugins. Plugin order is extremely important, but again, we'll cover that at the end of the video as it's the last thing you should be doing before playing. Finally, on the top right, you have your tool, drop down and run button, which you should from now on always be using to launch Skyrim, otherwise Mod Organizer cannot inject the mods into your game, but more details on tools will come later. The next thing we'll need to set up is SKSE. You don't need to know much about this except you're going to need it and it just works. SKSE is a Skyrim script extender, which a lot of mods rely on, so you'll need to use it. Click the link in the description, navigate to the current anniversary edition download link and download the package. You're going to need either WinZip or WinRAR or some zip program to be able to open the package. Open it up and you'll need to manually drag its entire contents, as I do here, into your Skyrim install folder. This will again be in Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim Special Edition. You can also click here in Mod Organizer for it to open your install folder for you. Next go back to Mod Organizer, drop down the tools on the top right and click edit. Here you can add a new executable. Navigate again to the Skyrim game folder you just dragged the files into and select the skse 64 underscore loader.exe. Now make sure your start in path is pointing to the same folder, Steam Apps Common Skyrim Special Edition, and press apply, and press OK. Now you have SKSE completely set up. You can select it from the drop down and run it with the button on the right. From now on you should always launch SKSE instead of Skyrim through Mod Organizer. And now is a good time to do exactly that and make sure your game still works. If it does, great, you've done everything right so far. Finally, in setting up our modded game, we will install ENB, which is a graphical enhancement framework which most people will want to benefit from. This is the last of the manual work you'll really have to do, so once again, click the link in the description, select the latest version, and scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page and click download. This button is the only way to download ENB, do not select anything apart from this. Again, open the package with WinZip or WinRAR, open the wrapper version folder, and in here, you'll see the two DLL files we will need. 
Don't worry about the rest of the files, we don't need them. EMB presets we'll install in a moment will contain their own versions of a lot of these files, so we only really require the DLL files for the time being. Drag both of these again into the same game folder we just installed SKSE a moment ago. Done! Congrats! Now you can install an EMB preset from Nexus of your choosing and drag those files into this same folder. But make sure you read the mod page and follow their individual instructions because each EMB can vary in its installation and requires different mods in order to work. Installing mods. Okay, so now you have your setup in place. Now it's time to actually install some mods. There are three main things you need to know. Where to find mods, how to install them, and what to look out for when installing them. Most mods you'll use will be found on Nexus Mods, the largest online gallery for mod authors to upload their work. When you find a mod you'd like to download, you can navigate over to its file tab, and if you have connected your Nexus account in Mod Organizer 2 as we did earlier, you can simply press Install with Mod Manager, and voila, the mod will start downloading in your Mod Manager under the Downloads tab on the right. Once it's finished downloading, simply double click on it, change the name if you want, most of the time you won't need to, and press OK. This will add it to your mod list on your left, unticked by default. Some mods during this stage will pop up with a faux mod, which is a little menu selector thing that the mod author has made to give you some choices and possibly patches for other mods when installing. Each one of these will be different, so just read through each of the pages, check what you need to, and press OK at the end as usual. Once a mod is in your left list, you can tick it. This will turn it on, and if it has a plugin, it will appear on your plugin list on the right hand side. And in a typical case, that's a mod installed. You can launch SKSE and check it out in game. However, there are some things we need to go over before you go download a million mods willy nilly. Firstly, is the mod version. You need to make sure that the mod is actually built to be compatible with your version of the game. Usually, this will be explicitly noted in the files section, stating which version of Skyrim the mod can be used with. If you are unsure what version of Skyrim you are running, again, navigate to your install folder and right click on Skyrim.exe, select properties, go to the details tab, and it's this number here. A mod might say 1.6 and above, and if this is the case, you're good to go. If the mod says only works on 1.59, then it will be incompatible and most likely crash your game. Best practice is to read mod pages before installing any mod. Secondly is mod requirements. Many mods on the Nexus will require other mods in order to use. When you press download on Nexus, it will pop up with its list of requirements. These will also need to be installed and in most cases loaded before your mod in order for it to work. Again, check that these requirements are compatible with your game version before installing. And also again, read the mod page because they will usually specify the requirements at the bottom and explain if any of the requirements are optional or actually core to the mod working. Both mod requirements and version compatibility are core to getting a working mod list, so do not ignore them. Your game will probably crash immediately in cases where these are not paid attention to. Tools Tools are another important but technically optional part of Skyrim modding, but without some of them you won't be able to use certain types of mods, such as most animation mods, or significantly changing your distant mod. I'm going to keep the tools to a very basic level and explain only Nemesis which is used to run animation mods and Loot which is used to mostly auto sort your load order. First, Nemesis. Nemesis can be installed as a regular mod from Nexus. Once it is installed and ticked, go once again to the drop down on the top right, select edit and add an executable. Navigate to the Nemesis mod install folder and select Nemesis Unlimited Behavior Engine.exe. To find this install folder, you can also right click on Nemesis on the left and click open in Explorer to find the folder instantly. Finally, change the start in location to be the Nemesis engine folder. Nemesis can now be used. When you run Nemesis, you'll see this screen. You only need to do this once at the end of installing all of your animation mods, but if you add any more after that, you'll need to redo this process from now on. Click engine update. Then once it's done, Go through the now updated list at the top of the window and check any mods that you actually have installed, if any. Once done, or if none of the mods you added were part of this list, press the launch Nemesis Behavior Engine button to let Nemesis do its thing. Once finished, you can close and your animation mods will work, if all of its mod requirements were downloaded. If for whatever reason Nemesis is failing to update or crashing, you may have an antivirus blocking the application, which you can add in an exception for in the program, or you may have an incorrect version of an animation framework or just a broken one,
try first to disable all of your animation mods and run Nemesis to see if it works. Loot Loot is a tool which will auto sort your load order. I will quickly show you how to set it up and then I'll explain load order in general as it's by far the most crucial thing you need to know in setting up a mod list. First, install loot from the link in the description. Unpack it in a folder somewhere, wherever you want really, I'd recommend making a modding tools folder somewhere. If Mod Organizer doesn't automatically find and add it to your tools, as usual, add an executable and select loot.exe. Loot can now be ran and will automatically organize your plugin load order to what it deems best. And for most people, it will likely be relatively correct. But as a final note in this video, let's go into more detail in what load order actually means. Load order. The order both your mods are loaded in, along with your plugins, is crucial. You should read mod pages and be sure that any mod that requires other mods is loaded after its requirements. For both the left side, where your mods are, and the right side, where your plugins are, they will load top to bottom. So the most important mods should be loaded last, if they're going to take precedent over other mods in your list. In a simple example, Skyland is a huge texture pack mod which adds new textures to a bunch of different landscapes. This mod, Whiterun Cobblestone, is a mod which just replaces the single Whiterun road texture. They both technically edit the same texture in-game, so in order for the Whiterun Cobblestone mod to work at all, it needs to be loaded after Skyland. Otherwise, Skyland will win the argument and it will make Whiterun Cobblestone useless. If you need help seeing which mods are actually conflicting with one another, you can see this little symbol here. If it's green, it's winning the argument. If it's red, it's losing because it's probably too high up. Now, where plugins are concerned, this can be the difference between your game crashing because your plugins are loaded in the wrong order, or even your landscape being completely broken because certain patches are not loaded after the mod it's trying to patch. You should always install mods one by one, and if you're experienced enough, organise your plugin load order yourself to make sure everything is where it needs to be. If you don't feel comfortable, use loot and hope for the best. Finally, one last ease of life thing everyone should know, you can create separators in the mod list side of MO2. This is extremely useful as you can organise your mods into categories and ensure certain groups of mods are loaded after others. For example, I have a separator here for textures, in which I put all my big texture packs, and then another separator for additional textures, for all my smaller, more direct texture replacements and I can ensure that all additional textures are loaded after my big texture packs without getting confused, so they actually show up in-game. Load order is one of the most important things you need to consider before finishing your list, but with that you now know everything you need to know about Skyrim modding in order to mod Skyrim. I'll try to make this as no nonsense as possible, but again if you need a more in-depth written guide with pictures, I have just released it alongside this video on my Patreon. Hopefully this was useful for new players, if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments and I'll try my best to get to them, but I'm sure other people in the community will try to help out. Also one last thing, if you're in the market for a new PC, be sure to check out my page over at Apex Gaming PCs, where you can pick from three different tiers of gaming rigs fit to the same specs I run, so you can be sure you can run modded Skyrim. Use code BURNS at checkout for up to $200 off your purchase. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.